Hey, fellow traveler, welcome to the Third Eye Awakening podcast, a show where we talk all about spiritual and psychic awakening, magic, the shift from 3D to 5D, star seeds, ascension, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, the universe, the multiverse, the Akashic records, all the good things. I am your host, Amy Belair, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Okay, let's do this. Hey, my friends, welcome to another episode of Third Eye Awakening. Today I have with me Monet Florence Combs, who is a life coach, a quantum healer, and hypnotist who helps starseeds recover their memories from lifetimes on other planets, heal at the soul level, and find their power in what makes them different. Monet is a Lyran starseed, a chronic illness warrior, and a mama of two little star children. This is going to be such a dope conversation, everyone. We were just chatting a little bit before I hit record, and I'm like raring to go and to compare notes and just hear all of the wisdom that Monet is bringing for us. So welcome, Monet. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Me too. Okay. So would you mind sharing with us a little bit more about your spiritual awakening journey, whether you were always awake to a degree or if you were asleep and then like, bam, some Mm -hmm. shit came and turned your world upside down. How did you figure out you were a starseed? What did your journey look like? Yeah. So I have a unique background in that I was always awake. I felt very lucky because I grew up in a very spiritual community. I'm from Encinitas, California, and there's a big kind of like meditation culture there. And so I actually grew up going to Sunday school at a temple that's founded by Paramahansa Yogananda. He wrote Autobiography of a Yogi. And so it was all about, it was non-sectarian. It was all about merging the East and the West. And so I learned to meditate with all these other little kids. We were always just like, oh, open your third eye and all this stuff when you're really little. So that was a huge blessing because I didn't have any spiritual baggage, any trauma to work through. I was always really open from being a kid. But I did have a lot of kind of differences, made me feel different than other children. I was highly sensitive, extremely sensitive. I always had, I felt this kind of inner responsibility, like it was my job to help our planet, to save the world. I felt so much pain from all the other, all the suffering that you see every day. And so I always carried that weight around with me and it was really heavy. I didn't know how to set that down. And so then (laughs) what happened eventually was I had this crazy starseed awakening where I was, I'd been a a birth doula for a while and I transitioned when COVID happened, I transitioned to being a life coach because we weren't allowed in hospitals anymore. As I was a life coach, as a business coach, I worked with moms, did a bunch of different things. But then I had this experience where I was really connecting to my guides more. And the message that I got was that I was supposed to be a healer. I wasn't just supposed to be a life coach. I was supposed to be a healer. So this modality fell into my lap, which is quantum hypnosis. I'm a beyond beyond quantum healer, and which is similar to QHHT, if anybody knows about that, Dolores Cannon's method. And except I get to do it virtually, which is really cool. And so then I... Was, oh, I should have my own session. And I knew about star seeds. I was like, I'm a classic star seed. I have all the markers for one. It's like I, I've struggled a lot in this lifetime with my emotional health, my physical health. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm just open. We'll see what comes through. And what came through was it just rocked my world. It turned my life upside down. I learned about this lifetime where I was in Lyra. Uh, on our original planet there. And I was a part of the Galactic Federation working with peace affairs in between, like within the galaxy at this high level position. And there was the Draconian War. And so it was all about this experience. It was the aftermath of the attack. And so I like sobbed for two and a half hours as I, I released all of this grief that I didn't know that I was carrying about this attack because I felt responsible for it because I had tried to dissuade the the rest of the Lyrans and the Federation to not move forward to let the reptilians come and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole, I have this whole session on my podcast if anybody wants to listen to it. But yeah, so that just rocked my world. It was like, 
oh my gosh, this, what now? (laughs) So my whole kind of identity crumbled apart and I had to choose, okay, do I accept this or do I not? And I chose to accept it and put my whole life back together and weaved this being a Lyran starseed into my identity. And my life has gotten a whole lot more interesting since then. (laughs) Yeah, that's so interesting to have it come through so powerfully. And I really appreciate what you just said about having to choose or decide whether, yeah, it is a choice. Am I going to make this real or not because on mm-hmm. a certain level like it, it is real because you had this experience like emotions with the memories right like it wasn't just yeah. like, oh I'm just imagining something it's just a daydream although I believe in daydreams but yeah. <laughs> my point is that like when there's emotions there that really tells you that there's it's not just a conjuring of your own yeah light of fancy absolutely but there's also this free will place where we can choose to incorporate it and assemble a new identity that integrated or I don't know, like just tell ourselves that it's or just be like, yeah, that was just (laughs) that was a weird experience and I don't know how to feel about it. And I'm moving on with my life now. Yeah. And I think it's a very brave choice to incorporate it because it's such a it's still even though it's becoming way more widely accepted and discussed, it's still totally a fringe thing to like like I think about I was just, (laughs) just trying to share an Instagram story on it goes to my personal Facebook profile now, Mm. which is a new threshold for me. I started out doing it on Facebook and then I was like, no, there's too Mm -hmm. many like old people from high school and like my (laughs) aunts and uncles and cousins and old friends and whatever. And I'm now I don't really care anymore, but it's still I know when they watch my stories they're just gonna be like what is she talking about it's still a weird scary place to go yeah yeah I did a lot of work around that before I was like because I knew that I knew this was my soul's calling and my mission to transform my business into working with other starseeds and so it was like all right we better get used to talking about this but it was it was like when it first happened it was okay this was such a powerful healing deep experience for me and nobody's really going to understand that and over time it's been really beautiful to see how actually by sharing my story more with the people who are around me they actually they're all oh okay I'm starting to get in now and it's turned out to be a really positive experience but it was scary as hell for for six months to to talk about it openly Mm, totally and gosh there's so many things that I want to ask you about I want to ask you about the real world grounded reality of shifting your work when you're a doula when you are a quantum healer those things are already or sorry a quantum life coach or I don't know if you were referring to yourself as a quantum life coach at the time but either way those are healing paths but to Mm. shift very deliberately and intentionally into owning healership and owning like galactic healership and quantum healership I I would love to hear about that but I also really my curiosity is peaked in some of the things that you were sharing with me before we hit record of the stuff that's been coming through your sessions lately and what you're discovering about the puzzle that we're piecing together right yeah yeah that's my favorite part of my job is piecing puzzle pieces together about galactic history. Yeah. So when I shifted my business, I just knew it was like I had to be so deeply in touch with my own intuition and my higher self. And so during my past life session, this particular past life session, the the first one that came through, I ended up channeling my past self during it. So some people, ha- they have, I see all different types of regressions experiences, but some people it's, oh, I'm just watching a movie. It's more, it's not really happening to them. They don't become the entity. But for me, I became him. There was a point halfway through the session where I, it's like a switch flipped and all of a sudden my voice is lower and the way wow. I'm talking is different. And I, yeah. And so he came through so strong and he told me like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Like you, this is your soul's purpose. It's to affect all these people to awaken in this way. And so it's just, okay, <laughs> if you say so. And yeah, it was, I found so much joy 
an interest in it that even though I was, I started out by doing more regular past life sessions and other type of work, it was like the joy and the desire was to be doing this galactic stuff because it is so interwoven into my soul's path. So it was just, I'm just, I have to, I just have to get used to it because on the other side of it, I just knew there was this freedom of following my soul's path and I have absolutely zero regrets. Yeah, that's really, I think a lot of people crave that, that much of a like tangible, notable experience that feels so clear, like the instructions yes. are so clear, but I would love to hear for you, was there still even a part of you that was like, am I crazy? And like questioning yourself <laughs> and was the self-doubt piece still there? Oh yeah, absolutely. At first it, it was there. It was there for maybe six months because I kept, it'd be like, I'd have to keep going back to this session, re-listening mm -hmm. to the recording, rereading the transcript, being like, okay, I did not make this up. And there are other people out there like me. And for me, so much clicked in my life after this happened after I experienced this and I was able to piece so many things together and connect dots that I, it just, I had done so much healing work on myself as a coach and through other modalities, but there were certain things I still couldn't explain. And this experience explained absolutely everything. And so I just had to like really lean into the self-trust and the message I got over and over again from my guides was, yes go, keep going. And then the more I did sessions with other people and experimented, I, sh I tweaked the format of these sessions to gear specifically toward galactic readings. And the more I did that, it was, I just found that every single person I worked with was a starseed. Like they've had past lives on other planets. And so then that encouragement, it was just like, all right, <laughs> there must be a demand for this out there some way, and, or I'm going to create... <laughs> created <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally i think at this time i feel like there's a there is an organic demand that is increasing all the time because more and more people are just feeling that sorry they're feeling that thing like you can't even if it's so subtle to them as they like can't quite put their finger on what feels wrong or yeah out of alignment with the way that we do things and the way we exist. And then other people are having full-blown, like crazy psychic experiences and astral. Oh, yeah. And there's just so much going on. Okay, so why don't we go first into the different galactic civilizations that you have encountered and the way that they feel to you, the way that you interpret them, they present mm -hmm. themselves, and some of the star seed kind of qualities and characteristics. And then we can talk about, do the note comparing about different yeah. information we've both been getting through our sessions. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So the way I work with people, I do a reading with people first, usually. And through, I use these this galactic heritage deck that's really an amazing modality. And so that's when I start to pick up on the energy of the person who I'm working with. And I've come to being a sommelier or something where it's like, mm -hmm sensing the just really subtle qualities of somebody to see what kind of energy is coming through. We'll start with the Lyrans. Lyrans are typical. Lyrans represent the masculine polarity in our galaxy. And so they are very strong-willed. They're, they're manifestors. They are go out and get it and go. Because the Lyrans, they were the original coloni colonizers of the galaxy. They That's just their personality. And so I can usually tell when I'm speaking to a Lyran because of their personality and their energy is very intense. Not intense in like, like a dark way or anything, but intense in like a just this crazy energy that just like cuts through Zoom. So that's those are Lyrans. And then I see a lot of Pleiadians because the Pleiadians are very much involved in Earth right now. There's a lot of Pleiadian people. And so Pleiadian energy is a lot more kind of calm and peaceful and soft and joyful and sensitive. So I see that a lot. I've been coming across a lot of Syrians lately. Syrians who, Syrian starseeds who have worked, they worked on with Earth in a past, back when Earth was being seeded and back in the ancient times of ancient civilization. And so that's been really cool. I've been seeing, working with a lot of them lately. And so now they're back to complete their mission, but in, in this way on Earth in a more covert way. So that's cool. Yeah, Syrians are, 
they also, they're very high frequency. They don't quite have that intensity that the Lyrans have. It's a little more subtle, more like Pleiadian quality, similar to that. It's always toss up. It's okay. Are you Pleiadian or are you Syrian? <laughs> Let's see what comes through. And Arcturians, I've been working with some people who have Arcturians in their like Earth family lately. Arcturians are so high frequency that sometimes when they come through, they have they might have some physical problems. They might have some neurodivergence, things like that. But they are super, super powerful. But a lot of these really high frequency beings really struggle in their life, their earth incarnations. And then, of course, I'll get people who have lifetimes in Lemuria or Atlantis. And but they have their soul is a mix of some other primary civilization. Orion star seeds. I come across them often. Ones who are from they usually had some part to play in the wars that kind of took place on their planet and they were working for the light and those are always really interesting sessions when they come through a lot of them have kind of combat experience they might have been drawn to the military or something like that because they have had experience in, with the black league which is part of orion's kind of resistance movement I'm trying to think of anybody else who comes through often. Um, I don't see a lot of Zetas. I don't see a lot of Andromedans, actually. But those are the main ones that I see a lot of the time. Cool. That's so awesome. And I'm interested. I do want to go back to that memory that you had that sort of cracked you open yeah. around the experience of the the Lyran Wars. Was that, yeah. that it? Like, what understanding did you get from that memory about what is playing out like this ongoing sort of galactic saga that we're living through. It's interesting because so I had this experience and after this session, I was emotionally very raw. I felt very confused because it, the session abruptly ended right when it was like, I have to go back and I have to save our planet because I had escaped with some people in some other runs and it was like, I have to go back. I have to fix the balance. I have to go back to the Federation. And that was the cliffhanger where my session ended. And so then I had this, it was like this unfinished business that I felt for for a, a while where it was like, I have to know what happened. I have to connect back and I have to know what's going on now. But overwhelmingly, what I found out when I went back in, which was very interesting because I had, I had follow-up sessions. I connected with my parallel self, who she is currently on a ship. She's Lyran. She's on a ship and she's working with the Federation, protecting the Earth right now. And so what she told me directly, I had all these questions like, what now? What's going on now? How can I fix this? How? Because that part was still so open-ended. And she was like, we have moved past this. You need to let this go because we have let this go. <laughs> it's almost like coming out of a coma. And then you find the like, is like the last what's thing going on. <laughs> and it feels like it just happened. We've got to deal with this. And then yeah. like, in a coma for 20 years and right. <laughs> everyone else is, it's done. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. She's, and she's, we've already, it, this was like literally 50 million years ago. Like yeah. you can chill out and relax and you are safe here on earth and you don't have to worry about this. You are protected. <laughs> Start looking at the future. <laughs> don't keep going back to this past because it just it felt so I was just still releasing and processing so much grief for yeah. months after this experience oh <laughs> yeah that's so intense and <clears throat> I really love hearing you talking about the the Lyran aspect of yourself that is currently on a ship because I really started I struggled for the last couple years especially in 2021, talking about star seeds, even though like knew they were real, but it's like the language mm -hmm. made it, English made it difficult for me to integrate the concepts. And then without them being able to integrate, I knew every time I tried to talk about it, I was warping the concept. Yeah. I was like, I don't, they are worlds, they are realms that like a physical spherical planet isn't accurate but at the same time there is an element of that is accurate and I was I would say like you have incarnation experiences elsewhere but also <laughs> yeah. like 
<laughs> some of them are past, but in a way that's all happening right now, but also have current. Like if you really feel alive, like a star seed right now, like it feels alive in you. I think it is because we have other galactic aspects currently incarnated or yes. I don't know. I don't even incarnated is weird because what does that even mean to me? So for example, I thought I was Arcturian for a long time because I have a lot of Arcturians influentially in my field, but I think like my guide is Arcturian. And mm, that's the, pretty common to have an the, Arcturian guide. Yeah. And the beings that like my oldest son is Arcturian, he's 17. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, I've never met him, so I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure John Frusciante is Arcturian and he's, he's the um, guitar player for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm. And he was like my beacon of light when I was really struggling and felt totally alone. And so it's, they have a frequency. One, I have two mentors right now that are both have Arcturian aspects. Mm. There's something about their frequency that helps me to integrate everything that I'm experiencing. Mm. And so I thought maybe I was Arcturian. But when I look at my son, for example, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're currently Arcturian, like currently. Mm. And you're human. So it's yes. like, no, it's not like in his past lives, he was Arcturian. He is Arcturian and he has a human incarnation. But the Arcturian realm to me is barely physical. It's barely even plasmatic anymore. It's the texture of it is very thin, almost like it's all thought creation, thought field. Uh -huh. So even talking about incarnations feels like the wrong word because there's very little that's kernel about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think the way that I explain it is there are some civilizations that are in light bodies right now mm -hmm. and Arcturians being one of them. And it is an incarnation, but it's also, it's an incarnation of light. <laughs> so yes. it's not quite physical. And yeah, and so, yeah, it can be hard to describe. Of course, there are other civilizations that are still in fourth density and still choosing to stay in physical incarnations. And those are easier to conceptualize uh, <laughs> than some of the more, the ones that that are not in physical bodies or Ar Arcturus also, there's a difference between Arcturus energy and Arcturian beings. And so it gets yeah. confusing too. Do you, would the Syrians be an example and the Pleiadians of fourth density, but still incarnated? So there's like physicality to their civilization? Yes. Yeah, so Syrians are, some of them are in fifth density now and they are light beings, but some of them are still in physical incarnations. Pleiadians have chosen to stay in you know, their physical bodies as have, you know, Lyrans are, the Lyrans have inter intermingled and interbred with these other civilizations but you still get some true lyran lineage but they are they are also in physical bodies as well yeah i'm finding that too i don't speak in terms of the densities so i don't really understand exactly what those are i understand things in terms of dimensions of consciousness but what i see when i connect with the pleiadian realm for example is it's very Everything is glowing. There's mm. so oh, much yeah. more light, but it's mm -hmm. still physical. There's plants everywhere. Well, there are multiple Pleiadian realms, first of all, that I see. But deeply, the characteristic is so much light. Everything is huge. Like all the plants mm. are huge. It, all, it looks like a total paradise, the main one that I connect with. And sometimes yeah. it used to confuse me. And I was like, is this just our future? Or is this, is this a separate realm? And sometimes I don't know. It, it just all streams together. And I just have to trust the information that comes through in a given session. And yeah. then in the Syrian realm, the main one that I see, but I also see multiple, but the main one that I see is this, it reminds me so much of Atlantis. Mm. The architecture is incredible. It's just, huh? Like they had the harmonics and the understanding of like geometries and harmonics that goes into what they have created. It looks very much like a cityscape, but it's yeah, oh, so beautiful. And so that's what I associate with like a degree of physicality, because really, if you're purely a light being, you really don't need dwellings or buildings, right. whatever, but they have them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's always so interesting. So the way that I, one of the ways that I pick up on somebody's where a, a past life or future life, sometimes they're somewhere in between, but where it's occurring is as they're describing where they're at, what they're looking at, and it's addressing it. It's like, oh, okay, that sounds like Lyran architecture, or that sounds like Syrian. Or, so that's always interesting to hear other people describe it as they're watching in their minds, either they're living the session, or it 
sometimes it'll be some sort of, it might be like a more ancient Syrian civilization where everything is underwater or it's just all these kind of different factors. And so as soon as somebody starts describing it, that's when I get usually get the hit where it's mm. like my whole body goes, <laughs> and it's like, okay, I know where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> we can put a pin in the map of the yes, exactly. <laughs> potentials. And I also want to circle back to this, the lion aspect of you being on a ship because yeah, there's, we'll know the ones who listen to all my episodes will know that I have this weird thing where I see a lot of ships in my, like in Akashic Reef. And I received this message back in February about, oh, fuck, we're on the ships. We're already on the ships. This is just, mm. it was almost like we're in this kind of recessed pod on the ships yep. and we're plugged into this Earth Diatara simulation. There are like very loving, other galactic counterparts, lab workers or whatever that are yeah. monitoring our vitals and they're adjusting yeah. our simulation dials. They're adjusting it. And like when we have shadow shit come up, they're cranking it up a little bit because we have to deal with this. We have to deal mm. with it so that we can get, get on with the show. And the message I got in February was like, get on with the fucking show. Yeah. Deal with your shadow. Deal with karma's over. Let it go. Let it all go. The karmic stuff here is over, but you have to choose to let it go. And you have to wrap up, you know, your stories. That means releasing your shadow, releasing your baggage, manifesting everything that your heart and soul truly desire, not like weird warped ego desires, but like true fulfillment for your incarnation. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'm, I don't understand ships. So, oh, I can't wait to tell you about tell me about it. Please. I'm like, okay. every time somebody talks about ships, I'm like, help me figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I have this one client right now who is amazing. She is so every once in a while, you as a hip as a hypnotist, you encounter somebody who has a super strong connection with an entity that is a part of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so she's like that. And so Every time I do a session with her, we end up put, playing the session on the podcast because she's her entity that she connects to his or their name is Anru, who works for the Federation. And so these sessions have become pretty popular on my podcast because Anru always has really amazing information about things. And so the last session we did, we actually learned about the ship came through. It was like a typical mothership type. And so this is happening currently right now. So it's coming near Earth. Right now, it's hanging out outside of Earth. There's a lot of smaller ships around it where actually my parallel self is located protecting things. And so there are a lot of us, not all of us, there are different types of star seeds as far as the mechanics of incarnating goes. But there are many star seeds who are on this ship right now. Their body is there as a star being. And as how you described, they're in like a stasis pod. They're being monitored, all of that. And so as the, as these, this would be called like the, these are second generation starseeds. They've been here for quite a while. The ones who are currently, it's like they're being relieved from their duties from earth. So they've been here for a while. Their mission is wrapping up. And so then as they naturally, as their bodies naturally pass on earth, then they're being transported. Basically their soul is going back to the ship and they're waking up. And so the reason why it's right by earth is so that they can see out the window like, there's the planet like that you were just on because they've been here for so long that it's just they're used to being an earthling. So that is currently happening right now because that is wrapping up this kind of second generation as being recalled. So there's still a third and fourth generation here and a, a chunk of the second generation people. And they're all kind of obviously here to help with the consciousness shift on our planet and the ascension and all. And that's so interesting because my friend Christopher, the Astro Media, messaged me a few months ago after a really powerful retreat experience that he had where he saw the mothership and remembered the mothership and was crying and was saying, Mama. And he messaged me and he's like, No, I'm on there. And I know you're on there too. And I know that yes. we're, it was just really beautiful. And I, so it's, it's such powerful confirmation when we're all getting the same mm -hmm. information, but just like separately, like we don't, this yeah. is. Yours and my very first conversation together ever. It's really cool. And I also, I have a client who sees so many ships. And when I'm, I love doing Akashic readings because it's not 
the answer is coming from my conscious mind. So I learned so much too, but he's, did I really see a ship or what kind of ship was it or whatever? And a lot of the answers are like, they're plasma ships, they're plasma. Mm. So the ship and all its inhabitants, they're, how do I put it? Their energetic architectural structure changes altogether. So the purpose of being on a ship is that everybody who's on a ship is contained within a field that changes their structure all at the same time so they can travel, I guess, between densities and dimensions at the same time. And that I'm like advancing little by little in my understanding of ships. But I think the part that really confuses me is that I think NASA is full of shit and the cosmology <laughs> that they've given us is not complete garbage because nothing, all the deceptions are partial truths, partial deceptions. But there's the part of me that's like equates ships with like metal things traveling through space as right on like star trek and things like that's where i'm like oh, what is it i don't get it but i'm getting there little by little i also i just thought of while you were talking about this and the different generations and passing the torch i i had a bunch of spirit babies come in my field a while ago and i so i was like all right i guess i'll do a reading it's not really my thing to do spirit baby channelings mm -hmm. and it was like a collective of lyrans and they were oh how cool bassy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> they were, i'm sure that my youngest son he's 15 months old very soon in a couple days tomorrow actually he is oh he's lyran he yeah. has some bump to oh yeah him. i have a lyran daughter <laughs> it's really intense yeah it's it is really intense like when you were describing them at the beginning i was like yeah yep that sounds like yeah really uh -huh. yeah what's really fun lately i've been working with uh, people who've been coming to me who've been pregnant mm -hmm. and so that's been really amazing to connect to their babies too and finding out i love that's one of my favorite things is when somebody comes to me who is a parent and then we get to find out more about their children because there are so many of them here there's so mm -hmm. many little star seeds here and yeah I, and I just think about how for me I wish I had that type of awareness or support or something but it's so cool to be able to help people so that they can be better parents to their star seeds who are who might struggle in this incarnation or might feel different or alone because there's a whole lot of them out there <laughs> yes and <laughs> The I feel and they know it. They know that's the vibe I get is they know that they're they're um, different. They're oh I can't remember the word. Oh, when somebody their deployment, whatever, like their oh like their mission. Their mission, yeah. Their time here is different than it was for us, which is different yeah. than it was for like the people of our parents' generation or older who just literally came to be like a higher frequency in right the midst of intense density and it keeps getting lighter and lighter but that doesn't mean it's easier that portion is easier but they yeah, have yeah. like real boots on the ground stuff but <laughs> it's liar and collective was so sassy they were like listen we know what is up we remember we're not coming in with an amnesia cloak we know who we are yeah you can make us forget if if you don't work in cooperation with us but it's going to be hard to make us forget and we're right. also not really going to stand for the old-fashioned parenting techniques. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, we're going to make noise. And yeah. the, the things <laughs> if you just listen to us. <laughs> yeah. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. When my I had my first, my first session, and one of the questions that I had was like, how do I be a better parent to my daughter? Because I know what is her deal. And what came through is she, my past self told me like, yeah, she's liar and she was in a past life, this specific past life with you. And she just needs to be able to, she needs to be able to scream. She needs to be able to get all of this intense energy out because it, you can't stamp it out. Like, <laughs> let's say I, I, traditional parenting in the past has been like it's encouraging breaking kids' spirits so that they comply. Yeah. But with these kids, you, you can't. Exactly. So it's like surrender or be dragged and find a new way to connect to them and, and parent them in a way exactly. where they feel respected. Because if they don't feel respected, they know. Like, they're not dumb. A hundred percent. Surrender or be dragged is exactly it. And like, that was the part where I understood, like, 
you can get them off mission if you don't surrender because they'll get so hyper-focused on dragging you that yeah. they'll forget about their mission, but they won't yeah. actually forget who they are. And so, it's, yeah, let's just, they were like, we're taking the baton now. So excited. I love that. <laughs> Have you had any cool intel come through your sessions lately about where we're at in the progression of things in terms of this awakening and ascension cycle and what what we need to be focusing on? Yeah, absolutely. What has come through lately, I got this information particularly from Anru, the entity that I mentioned. And what Anru said was that we're going to, obviously, things are going to get harder before they get better. I think we all know that as our humanity is shifting. And so we can expect there will likely be another major war, possibly like a world war coming up on the within our lifetime. And as when that happens, here's what Anru said was probably going to happen. And everything Anru said has been legit so far that we would end up basically it would be like we we get so close to blowing ourselves up and then we realize wait a second what are we doing and there's a discussion about actually just completely destroying any sort of nuclear weapons and we come together and integrate the polarities through this process of coming close to the brink essentially and then after that what will be able to happen is we will, the star people who are here as star seeds will be able to actually come back in their physical bodies because we will then, the earth will be open to the galactic community. There will be some sort of awareness that, oh yeah, we're not the only ones out here. There are other benevolent civilizations. And so we'll be able to come back as ourselves and we begin to share technology, we begin to collaborate, begin to help the humans once once we put down the weapons and work through our shit, basically. Do you do you ever get any Oh my god, my son is screaming his head off downstairs. Do you ever get any confirmation about or clarity around whether or not Earth has been under a quarantine period? Or I've heard that before. I don't personally know. I haven't seen anything about that. Sure. Do you mean quarantine as in there's a non-interference type of a... I do though. I do know there's a non-interference. I understand that's basically why star seeds are a thing because it's like, all right, then we have to come in and be humans in order to influence the situation without overriding free will. But I've heard that there's been like a quarantine situation where, yeah, I guess maybe that's what you're talking about. Like humans have to figure their shit out for themselves mm -hmm. before star beings can come back and yes. present themselves as star beings. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. Because yeah, basically it's like they know they're trying to hurry the process along as much as possible with earth so that we don't blow ourselves up, but they know that now it's not like a bunch of ships could descend and some Pleiadians could hop out and be like, hi, we come in peace. Nice to meet you. <laughs> because the earthlings would be like, completely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> running around like chickens with their heads cut off and obviously they we know that'd be that would run the risk of deterring messing up the whole entire project of the starseed project that has been in place for so long so yeah we earthlings we gotta get our shit together <laughs> that's what it comes down to it's so hard, though, because and we do have to get our shit together, but there's there's so many layers of deception that are interwoven in our psyches. Like it, it's not just or this is how I perceive it anyway. It's not simply a matter of we're not highly evolved and we're, we're just these kind of Neanderthal grunting kill blah, blah, blah. Sort right. of there is an element of that in there. And that is a part of ourselves that we have to integrate and, and accept and get a state of mastery over so it's not just in the unconscious rejected suppressed shadow but right. i also feel like there's so much there is a lot of interference but it's from consciousness fields that don't respect quarantine rules or non-interference mm. clauses mm -hmm. and there is a lot of deception that confuses people and keeps them in states of trauma and fear so that it's very hard to move into basically like the heart center. I feel like mm -hmm. when we're in the heart center, we truly 
interface with reality through that chakra yeah, absolutely. and that chakra just knows the truth and when we're actually in our heart we know what's up but we're constantly traumatized just even just like watching the news or whatever like we don't have to have personal ongoing constant trauma in order to be traumatized it's just these like jolts of very jarring information that causes us psychological yeah. mental emotional physical distress and it makes it very hard for us to get our shit together yeah i think really what we what it comes down to is like finding our own empowerment to stay in our lane right turn off the news go to the places where you feel the most connected to yourself to others to your community and like you said connect to that heart center but i think overall we're not we don't have to be victims right we can protect ourselves we can choose to opt out of some of the things that are not that are pulling us back and trying to keep us down as our earth is going the people who are in power right now because of the shift it's like they're clinging so hard to and doubling down really because right now it's like they know that we're all awakening <laughs> so it's we just have to keep going really protect our energy and where we're putting it totally do you feel like through the memories that you've had of your Lyran self in a past life and through your sessions, do you feel like you have any clear understanding of I got what am I trying to ask specifically? I'm trying to like make it specific. It's not just a vague question, mm -hmm. but who we are. I hate using these terms, who we are at war with. I don't I don't actually see it that way, but at, there is a level where that is the narrative that's playing out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think <clears throat> the way that I think of it is there are I feel like there are people who are in power who have I don't believe in evil. I don't think of it that way. I think that there are humans who are just abusive in terms of abusing power. There's greed. There are there's this such this human part of our brain that is always going to to go have this ability to go towards the shadow, the dark in in a, in an unhealthy expression. And though those people they may never come around. And so it's it's hard because we can't control other people. So we the only thing we can control is our own reality and who we spend time with and what we consume and being conscious about that. And I, I'm a strong believer in not consuming too much fear, right? Because there's fear is something that we really have to deal with as a species. It's so strong here on earth. And so sometimes when, when we awaken and it's okay, and we see things for what they are, we still are in fear because we're so focused on this victim narrative, deception and all the people in power that are harming us. But we've just, it's just another, the other side of the same coin, basically. So it's like we, we have to just really protect ourselves and allow others to be different than us and it's okay and when we are so sure of our own truth and are so conscious about our own energy then we don't have to buy into that if that makes sense yeah is there any like cool thing that has come through that you would love to share with the audience that hasn't really organically come up in any of the questions that I've asked? Let me think. I have so <laughs> My work is so interesting. I have so many interesting things that come up. I think it would probably be cool to talk about maybe the difference between, we talked a little bit about the mothership and the people in the stasis pods and kind of the, the other types of starseeds that we see. Because I think, I know, at least for me, I was really searching for those answers. And I and think I kept getting glimpses in sessions. It's like, oh, I have a parallel self. That's weird. I wonder if other people have that. Or, oh, this person is in a, a stasis pod and their body is alive, but they're here. Like, how does that work? And so then each, as sessions have, the more I've done, the more I've been able to put these pieces, puzzle pieces together. 
And we think about there's this kind of model of these four generations of star seeds, which is different than the three waves of volunteers, which Dolores Cannon has talked about. But there are a lot of similarities there. But so we talked a little bit about the second generations, which are being recalled now. There was a first generation. Those are the people who were here initially. They were the test round and they were like the A team. If you think about it, they, mm. that was over a period of thousands of years. They were here for a while. But the really high frequency A team who came here and then they went back. They were recalled a while ago. And so then it was Gen 2. They're starting to be recalled. We also have Gen 3 who are also in the stasis pods. And they're here to really help in our lifetime with hurrying along this kind of shift in consciousness. And then Gen 4 are the ones who are coming in a lot Oh, and these are going to be the ones who are these parallel selves where it's actually there's a consciousness that is split. So, for example, there's me here and then there's also me on a ship somewhere else who is going about her business, doing her thing. And so most all the ones who are coming in now, these babies, these children, a lot of us here are going to be this type, which has, has a parallel self who is elsewhere, usually connected with the Galactic Federation. And so... That's been very interesting. These ones who are the stasis pods, they're going to be a lot more adept to dealing with Earth because they are, they've been here a while. And so they're, they're not the typical starseed who really struggles. I can usually tell who's who, depending on who I talk to before we get into a session. But the parallel selves are going to have a lot more kind of problems in this incarnation being here because it's harder to maintain this split consciousness. And so a lot of us are going to have a lot of struggles with being feeling very sensitive, having a lot of physical problems, mental health issues, things like that. And so I think it helps to start to piece together for you, like listening, what type you might be and knowing that you're not alone too. There are so many of us here and yeah, they're... You're never alone. Mm, absolutely. And coming together to form communities, whether they be virtual or like physical in real life communities is a luxury that we really didn't have 10, 20 years ago. And even yeah. though it's still new, it is really beautiful. And it's the time to take advantage of that to find your people that you resonate with usually it's easier online but definitely there are places in the world where we can come together physically like where some of more star seeds or more star beings are clustered and it's just such a it's such a wonderful feeling to to be like oh yeah i'm not alone i'm not alone not crazy. Yeah, i think most of us have felt like that felt like an alien on this planet and never knew why and so then it's like when you finally get that confirmation it feels it's so healing. But then it's now what I, <laughs> nobody around me understands this experience that I had or, or whatnot. But then it's as we reach out and find others like us, it, it just, that makes all the difference. A hundred percent. This has been such an amazing conversation and I would love for you to share with where we can find you and what the different, more about the services that you offer. You've talked about the sessions and else that you want to share with us and invite my community to check you out. Yeah, absolutely. So you can listen to my podcast. That's a really great place to start. I play recordings of these sessions when my clients give me permission, which is always really fun and interesting. And so the podcast is the Starseed Awakening podcast. And then I also have, you can go to my website. It's, I try to keep things consistent. It's the starseedawakener.com is my website. And so usually the kind of flow of the way people work with me, they usually have a reading and then the reading, you can apply the value of the reading to a hypnosis session. If you decide you want to explore hypnosis, readings are great because we get a preview of what you might find out in hypnosis. You also, it's great to kind of get that confirmation that you're a starseed because sometimes I think a lot of us are like, yeah, I'm probably a starseed, but am I really? <laughs> so the reading helps with that. And then I also have the more long-term program where we do that deep healing work that many of us are being called to do at this time. So there's that. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Starseed Awakener. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> the same at the Star Scene Awakener on TikTok. I do different videos about different civilizations and different things like that. 
And I'm very active in my stories, like I do on Tuesdays. I do tell all Tuesdays where you can ask questions about past lives or different civilizations or things like that. So you can, I'm a real person. You can connect with me and, and reach out. So cool. And uh, yeah, I was checking out your website earlier and I was really like very excited to see the kind of sessions that you offer, the kind of, I love the, so, do you prefer that people come in for the reading first and like as a primer, is that kind of your preference or is it just the way it tends to happen? It just tends to happen that way, but either way completely works. Sometimes there are people who have had, I have two different types of people. I have people who they highly suspect they're a starseed right? And they really fit the mold and they're like, but they're still searching for that confirmation. And so that's where the reading comes into play. And then I have people who it's like they have, the ETs have been contacting them since they were a kid and they're always having dreams and they're saying different galactic civilizations and their dreams. And, you know, it's just like somebody has been trying to get a hold of you and it's time. <laughs> and so then those people sometimes go straight into kind of my bigger package. So it just depends. <laughs> That's me. I'm like, I'm still yeah. thinking this whole time. I'm like, okay, I have to go same with Monet. Because I feel like there are things like, especially with understanding the ships and expanding, because I only, I mean, I don't have the time to, I'm so busy with sessions and things like that. I'm sure you can relate. I really don't have the time to do my own Akashic readings anymore. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I see such that. dope shit for other people. I want to see <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, I think I need to book in with Monet. And that's me. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going to skip the preliminary skip reading. Skip the reading. <laughs> yeah, you can totally do that. Yeah, it's so funny. I'm the same way too. I'm like, I need to do another hypnosis session for myself. So that's on the docket for me because those are always so fascinating. I always share them and play them on my podcast because they're always, you never know what's going to come out of them. So cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all my Starseed listeners, go and binge Monet's podcast. Go check out her website, her TikTok, her Instagram. And guess what? For the Patreon bonus, Monet offered something truly amazing. I'm so excited for it. She has offered a free group hypnosis. It's, it's like a past life Starseed kind of regression yeah. session mm -hmm. that runs about 90 minutes long. And it's going to be on December 7th, that is a Wednesday, at 1 p.m. Central, which means 2 p.m. Easter, or Easter, Eastern, which means 11 a.m. Pacific, is that right? 12 yep. p.m. Mountain. I cannot convert to European. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. Anything, but you can look it up. But anyway, if you're in North America, that's the little swath. It's we're going to do it over Zoom. If you are not able to attend live because it's not we didn't talk about this beforehand. So this is my real time hashing it out. But my mental concept of it when we were figuring it out is it's not a and a It is a group. No, like you guide. So everybody has their own unique experience individually. We don't have to talk to each other. We don't like you can have your camera on or off or whatever. Yep. You're facilitating this. So if you're not able to attend live, you can still experience the hypnosis by watching the replay. So this is an incredibly generous Patreon bonus that Monet has offered. And I am so honored and so excited for all of you. And if you aren't a Patreon member already, hello. <laughs> like, get in there. It's $5 a month. So oh, that's a steal. <laughs> yeah. There are higher tiers with other things, but that's the minimum requirement to get this beautiful offering. But I do hope a lot of you well, check out Monet and consider booking a session with her because I know in Soul Space and on Instagram, I get so many questions all the time about people who feel like they're star seeds. And I just feel like you are an amazing resource to help people connect with that. Thank you. Oh, I also forgot about, I have another program that's a little bit different than these kind of one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. sessions that I do too, because I, I work with a, a lot of my clients are also healers or they're coaches or some sort of thing like that. And so I also have a business coaching program too. That's like a group. It's like a course, but it has a live component as well, live calls and a live community too. So for anybody, I've been a business coach for a long time and <laughs> done, started many businesses in my life. If anybody needs a little extra help out there who are healers, getting their business off the ground, that's, that's a great place. To yeah. You can find out about that on my website. 
which is really amazing because there are a lot of business coaches out there, but that doesn't mean that those business coaches understand the heart aspect that goes into yeah. having a spiritual, like a soul mission of service kind of business. It's a yep. whole other game. <laughs> it's a whole story. other game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really geared towards starseeds, people who maybe don't resonate with the kind of like muggle aspects of having a business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we look at it from that point and it's a beautiful space for people where you can be yourself throughout the process and not try to <laughs> be some of you that you think you should be, but you can come as you are. Amazing. That's awesome. You have so much good stuff to offer. And thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom and the things that you've learned through your sessions and sharing your journey. It's been an incredible joy for me to connect with you. And I have no doubt that the listeners found incredible value in this as well. So thank you, Monet. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you, beautiful listeners, for the powerful currency of your attention and your time. I love you. I adore you. I appreciate you so very much. Have a beautiful day or night wherever you are. And I will catch you on the next episode. Hey, my beautiful friend. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Third Eye Awakening. If you like what you heard and you want to go deeper, then head over to my website, amybelair.com and check out my store, which is full of my past programs, courses, modules, masterclasses, light codes, etc. that are powerful and they are potent and they pack a punch. Not going to lie. They are here to support you accelerate you and activate you in your spiritual awakening and psychic development journey and slash or if you want to stay in my most current vibey live energy then I suggest that you head over to the patreon and join me there at the lowest tier level which is only five dollars a month you get a secret bonus episode for every third eye awakening episode that goes out you also get a weekly energy report and light language activation and you get a new moon and full moon emancipation transmission so those are some fun ways to play and i'll just remind you that i always have live programs going so keep your eyes on my website on my social media and here on the podcast to find out what is the most current offering that i have Either way, I love having you in my world and I hope that I get to meet you and work with you soon.